photographic moment and I'm inside, it's late February and we're almost done with winter and we're kind of gearing up for spring. Everybody's getting excited, excited about spring nature photography. It should be a great spring with all the, all the ground being so well uh, saturated with all the snow we've had. Uh, one of the things I want to talk about today is the difference between image size sensors. This was a suggestion from one of the subscribers to my YouTube channel. And uh, I've been trying to get this video sound where I can explain this uh, under 10 minutes. And I'm going to try to go real quick. It's going to be down and dirty, but hopefully this will help understand the difference. 35 millimeter uh, digital cameras that are single lens reflexes, meaning you can change the lens on them, uh, usually have three, uh, one of three different size image sensors. The image sensor is the, the actual the digital film. That's a little tiny scanner in the back of the camera. And I call it a scanner because to me it, it works a lot like a, the old flatbed scanners. Um, the thing is there's, there's three different sizes. There's APS-H, APS-C, and full frame image sensors. Where it gets a little bit confusing is the effect it has on the different lenses, those sensors. A full frame sensor such as uh, five, on a 5D Mark II, when I put a lens such as this one, the 17 to 35 millimeter on here, I'm going to get the effect of a true 17 millimeter super wide angle lens. If I put the 300 millimeter lens on here, I get a, the true effect of a, a 300 millimeter lens, just as it would be if it was if I was shooting on film. Okay, full frame sensor. When you go to the smaller size sensors, which are in a lot of prosumer and consumer brand cameras, uh, this one, this other camera that I work with is a 1D Mark III. It has an APS-H size sensor, which isn't too common. Uh, the APS-C size sensor is a little bit more, it's more common and more of this point and shoot and the consumer brand uh, digital SLRs. Those are smaller size sensors than a full frame sensor. So, Using a little visual aid, I'm going to try to keep this under 10 minutes. A full frame sensor is equivalent to a 35 millimeter piece of film. Okay, an APS-H would be more like this size. An APS-C size sensor would be more like this. As we go down in size of sensor, okay, the magnification effect of the lenses is increased. So when I shoot, you're shooting with a camera with an APS-C or APS-8 size sensor with a 300 millimeter lens, you're going to get something more like the effect of a 390 millimeter, well over 400 millimeter lens, especially when you get down to the uh, C size sensor. Uh, but with a full frame, I get a true 300 millimeter. That's good if you, that increased magnification, because despite these sensors being smaller size, the quality of these sensors is still exceptional, and it gets better every year. The um, with the telephoto lens, increased magnification, you actually get more bang for your buck when you're looking to photograph wildlife and sports and a lot of outdoor things. That's what I like to use the setup for. Now, if I'm inside and I'm using a very wide angle lens or I'm doing portraits where I want a very uh, narrow depth of field and a, you know, a lot of background just to go soft and out of focus, such as with, people port with portraits of people, I like to use the 5D Mark II with a full frame sensor because I get the full, I get more of a depth of field um, range in that lens. Also, if I'm doing architectural interior shoots, which I do a lot of, and I use that 17 millimeter, I want to use that with the 5D Mark II with a full frame sensor because I get a true 17 millimeter. I get the true benefit of that super wide angle lens uh, to include as much area as possible. Um, if I were to use that on the 1D Mark III, I lose that 17 millimeter. It's more like a 30, um, well, 17, but it would be something more like a 28 millimeter. So that's the difference, and that's why I like to use both of these type cameras depending on the situation that I'm shooting in, plus one serves as a backup to the other just in case something goes wrong. So full frame sensor, it acts like a true 35 millimeter camera with film, and you get a true 300 millimeter or true 17 millimeter effect. Once you go to the smaller size sensors, the magnification increases. The magnification ratio, or the, um, uh, the, uh, the number to keep in mind, 
is for an APS H sensor is 1.3 times. So you just take 300 millimeter times at 1.3 and you get the true millimeter magnification effect using that sensor. With an APS-C size sensor, it's 1.6 times, so it even increases the magnification effect of the telephoto lens. Um, I could go in a lot more detail, but it's, <laughs> it, it gets confusing, and I'm not going to be able to keep it within the YouTube limit of 10 minutes here. Um, so that's it real quick. Uh, depends on what kind of shooting you're doing. Um, so it's an important consideration when selecting a, a 35 millimeter digital camera is what size sensor and keeping in mind as you build your camera system and what kind of lenses you intend to add depending on what kind of shooting you want to do is the effect that sensor is going to have on the lenses. So very important to keep in mind. Also real quick, the uh, full frame sensor also is always going to give you a, a large digital file, RAW or JPEG, I prefer to always shooting raw file format um, than the smaller size sensors. So that's why you see some cameras like the 5D Mark II and um, the Nikon equivalents um, shooting uh, digital raw files that are 20 plus megapixels each. Um, so you get more, there's more information because that sensor is a little bit bigger. It's bringing in more um, image space and light to work with. Um, so you know, the pixel count on the width and the height of those raw files is always going to be larger on a full frame sensor. Something to keep in mind also when you're going to make high quality prints. That, now that's not to say you can't get a good high quality print. A lot of these 30 by 40s that you see around me, um, 30 by 40 inches, like this one again, um, this is actually shot with the 1D Mark III on an APS-H size sensor. So it's a good quality sensor. Um, it's just that you get a little bit more uh, information on a full frame sensor. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. Also, I'm going to post, uh, right after this part of the video is done, uh, images showing the effect of the 300 millimeter lens with a camera with the APS-H and the full frame sensor, and also the effect of the 17 millimeter, and you'll be able to see the difference. So I'm going to put those on right now. Quick things, uh, Shoot the Hills is a wonderful photography event here in Ohio. Uh, it's probably the biggest and best nature photography weekend in Ohio. It's at Hocking Hills, and I strongly suggest anybody who's interested in um, competing and for just a great, wonderful weekend. It's April um, uh, 17th, the weekend of April 17th at State Lodge at Hocking Hills State Park. I'll have the link at the end of this video for Shoot the Hills. Um, it's great. It's a wonderful event, and it's a great way to celebrate spring coming back.